Hello guys and gals and welcome to a new tutorial and also yes that was a new little intro and you might see a little bit of branding all over the place uh, it's just because I'm four subscribers at the moment away from 20,000 it's a huge milestone for me um, and I just wanted to make everything look a little bit fancier and more professional there we go because I'm going to go over some of my older tutorials and make updated versions for the new engine versions that have been released since I started doing this in this video we're going to be covering an extra type of interactive foliage. You may have watched my previous video on interactive foliage, but that only allowed our character to move where the foliage was. So if our character ran through grass, the grass would move out of his way. This version, however, if we were to push, say, this lovely sphere through, you can see that the sphere is affecting our grass. And the same with the bigger sphere and the tiny sphere. Wee! There he goes. And if our character runs through as well, we've got a little bit of a hack going on so our character can also push this around. As usual, if you just want to download the project files directly and ignore all the tutorial bit, then you can support me on Patreon and you'll be able to just download this directly. There are going to be some files to download. They are just from the Kite demo from Unreal Engine, but I'm going to provide you a link to just the bits that we're using in this so you don't have to download the gigabytes worth of data. So let's do it. Let's begin. The first thing that you're going to need to do once you've opened up your project is head to edit and project settings and we do actually need to change some of this so in the search at the top just type mesh and then scroll on down until you find lighting and then turn on generate mesh distance fields this needs this to be turned on without it it's not going to work at all so make sure you turn this on when you've ticked it it's going to close your engine it's going to restart it and then if you've got a lot of shaders, it might take a little bit of time to open up. Don't worry, it will look like it's stuck. It's still working, but once it's gone through this once, it won't ever have to do it again, unless you turn it on in another project, because they're project dependent. But for the project that you're using, once it's on, it's on. So let's do it. Let's head to a folder. We'll right click material and we'll call this interactive grass underscore M. And now we'll open this up. And the first thing that we're going to do is head to our little texture here, the T underscore field grass one OD. Obviously, if you have your own textures and you have your own meshes, feel free to use them. This is going to work with anything that you decide to put it on. Um, but for this, we're just going to be using this kite demo assets so that, you know, you have a basis of what to look for. Before we plug this in, we're just going to select our material and change the blend mode to masked because we need to be able to cut some of this out we're going to drag out from the alpha pin and plug this into opacity mask and we're going to drag out from rgb and plug this into base color and this is just going to give us our really basic grass and then we're just going to turn on two-sided so that we can see this through either side now to make our lovely interaction we're going to be using world position offset like we did in the previous version but this time we're going to be doing it a little bit differently so what we need to do is we first need to figure out where it is that we're going to be affecting our grass. And to do this, because we've turned on our mesh distance fields, we can right click and we can search for distance to nearest surface, like so. Then what we'll do, we'll right click and we'll search for subtract and we'll plug our distance into the A and then we will hold S and left click for a scalar parameter. And the reason we're using a scalar is so that we can just change this in real time should we need to quickly customize it without having to recompile shaders all the time. And we're going to call this distance from mesh and this is essentially going to be the radius that we're going to be using around our meshes to decide which bits of grass to move. We'll give this a default value of 40 and we'll plug this into the subtract and we'll hold O and left click for a 1 minus X just to invert these values like so. Then we'll right click and we'll search for clamp just so that we keep these between zero and one. Now we're just gonna move this out of the way. And this is essentially our mask. So we'll highlight everything, press C to comment and type in mask. This is our mask. Now we need to actually decide how to move it around. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna soften this off with a distance field gradient. This will give us a softer edge so it's not a harsh fall off. And to add this in we're going to hold m and left click for a multiply and then plug our clamp into the b so so now we're softening our mask with a distance field gradient pretty nifty hold m left click for a multiply and this is where we're going to decide how 
bar, we're going to be pushing something. So we're going to hold S and left click for a scalar, and we'll call this strength. And we're going to default this out at 1,000. And we'll plug this in. And this has to be quite a high uh, value. A lower value, you're barely going to be able to see it. Really high values, it's going to be a little bit over the top. Between 1,000 and 3,000 is a, is a good thing, but because we have this now as a scalar parameter, we can change this in an instance later, so we don't need to really worry about it. The next thing that we're going to do is we need to actually tell our grass what to move. To do this, we need to figure out where our vertices are. So we're going to right click and search for vertex normal world space. And this is going to give us all of our details about the vertices in world space. Hold A and left click for an add mode. Plug in the vertex normal world space and the multiply like so. So now we're taking our lovely mask and our softened gradient and the strength and we're adding that to where our vertices are. Finally, we're just going to clamp this value and the clamp value is going to be a scalar parameter that we're going to call our max offset. And then we are just going to give this a default value of 20. And we'll plug this into our max and we'll drag out from it again. And this time we're gonna plug it into a one minus X. So hold O and left click, plug that into the one minus X and plug this into the minimum like so and then we'll plug this into our world position offset now that's going to work all lovely jubbly so we're going to press apply there we are so you can see now we've got our lovely grass we have all of our information here that's doing its thing it's doing its thing vague right now what we're going to do is we're just going to head to our field grass mesh you can see here we've got three different materials. What we're going to do is right click our interactive grass material and create an instance. And then we're just going to plug this into all three slots of our grass, like so, and press save. And you'll notice that nothing's really happening here because it hasn't finished updating the shaders yet, but that's fine, it will get there. We'll open this up and now we can select all of our scalar parameters. And what we can do is once these have updated, we can plop a sphere in here or any sort of static mesh. We can put that into our grass here. So you can see here, it's already moving our grass around. If we get very close up, you can see here, it's pushing our grass, exactly what we want. And what we can do is we can change our values here. Now to get them exactly the same as my little intro, let's see where have we got it, here it is. We have 49.6 in the distance, 9.6, and we have 5,702 in the maximum offset, 5,702, and then 2,103, 2,103 in the strength like so. And now you can see we're getting this nice push around our sphere, and if we move this around you can see it's actually updating this in real time. Now. If you want to drag one of these spheres in, just drag in a sphere, and this is now just a static mesh, but turn on simulate physics, so when you press play, this will have gravity and will allow your character to push it around. You can see here it's wee, it's doing this lovely, lovely thing. Now you might notice when you've put yours in here that your grass is floating. And the reason your grass is floating is because it's looking for the distance between any mesh that's close to it. This includes your floor. So what we need to do is under the lighting, let's see if we got him. Lighting, do, 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 do. he's in here somewhere. Here it is, effect distance field lighting. If I turn this on, which is what you'll have by default, my grass will float. And this is because the ground is actually pushing the grass like our spheres would. So if you turn this off, that will stop the floor from generating a distance field. And now your grass will be on the ground. So we can press play and we can push our little spheres through. Yay, and you can see that it's affecting. Now by default, your character is not gonna be able to affect this. So what I've done just to, to cheat this, if I open up the third person character blueprint here, is I've created just a sphere that I've attached to him. Kind of lined it up with the bottom of his feet like so. So it's just a sphere lined up with him. And then the material is just a translucent material with zero plugged into the opacity. 
the mesh technically has to be there for it to generate the mesh distance field. You can't just hide the mesh or make the mesh, make the mesh invisible because uh, it will no longer generate mesh distance fields and it won't push the grass. Skeletal meshes also can't push the, ma uh, the meshes. So it has to be a static. So it's just a quick little hack there just to get your character to be able to push this around as well. But there we go. Uh, a really cool little interactive grass that will listen to absolutely every mesh that goes running on through there rather than just your character. Ta da Nice, right? Now, obviously, with the mesh... Mesh distance fields, it is a little bit harsher to render, so it's not going to work on lower end graphics cards. Uh, most graphics cards are going to be fine, so don't worry about it. It's not like, you know, ones from the past few years aren't going to be um, usable. And I don't believe that it will work on mobile either, but if you're going on mobile, you're not really going to want your grass to wiggle around because nobody's ever going to notice it anyway. But there you go, everybody. There it is. Lovely interactive grass. I probably should have uh, given it no roughness, but there we go. You can see it's working, like, all lovely. So there we go. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Huge thanks to all of my Patreon supporters. You can find the Patreon link below, as well as my Twitter and my Discord. Feel free to come in and have a chat with us anytime you want. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>